it's worth keeping in mind because more and more teams, I think, have been trying to take advantage uh, of G2 through these flexes. But G2 getting a lot of comfort here, you know, getting the Gwen, uh, you know, one of the most played for Broken Blade, uh, getting the Kai'Sa for Flacket has been his best performing champion uh, and something that is going to suit a dive comp very, very well. Oh, and kind of surprised at EG banning out supports. So I thought maybe they would want to target mid lane takeaway. Samira. Silas, something I hit on earlier, and maybe even something like a Zoe, yep. which is what Caps has had some like crazy standout performances on so far. It's so interesting to see that he gets the Samira respect ban after the earlier game. I mean, because Samira was 0 and 4 going into that. Like, I don't think that uh, Danny would, would really be reaching for that. Um, we'll see if it is actually double marks and ban. So, yeah, it is going to be double bans towards Banny, uh, Danny, but. Of course, there is still a lot available. Maybe they're trying to push him towards, say, like, hey, you're going to have to play Jinx, and we're playing full dive. Yep. Um, but, of course, Tristana is still available, something that can play a lot more safely, has some of that self-peel. Uh, there is still Ezreal, but Ezreal's a very bad matchup into the Kai'Sa, so you know, I wouldn't love to see Danny on that. Uh, so I'm kind of curious to see where he goes. One of the things that the Samira does do is puts up that wind wall as well. So if you're looking for an initiation with something like a hook in the form of the Nautilus, then you can get rid of that. And even the long range uh, Prey Seeker or Void Seeker from the Kaiser can be uh, blocked with it. So a bit of respect there. Obviously, Danny was a an officiant, a fish, and oh, that's not a word I can <laughs> I say right now, Barney. <laughs> Who's a fish? Danny was a fish. And, no, an aficionado of the Samira in his amateur days. And I was going to say days. this. The Gwen is a flex for G2. Caps has played Gwen mid before, so now the Jax getting picked as well. I wouldn't be surprised if the Jax is also a flex and we could see either of these just going into whichever matchup G2 want them into. Yeah. Uh, Very interesting. I, I think you're going to try to, you know, have the Jax against the Trinomir, almost guaranteed. 100%. And I feel like, you know, Gwen, I, you have a solid time up against the Galio. You, you kind of just both do whatever you want. You will win out in extended trade Can just it? with the auto tads and your oh, passive. Oh, it is support. It is support, oh, Galio. It actually is. So both, both teams trying to big brain one another. Tons of dive on the side of G2. Now some Wombo coming out for EG. This is so funny. You know, I called that out, but I didn't actually think it yeah. was going to happen. It's just one of those things that I know. It seems like everyone's read is that G2, you know, it does not fare well in some of these disadvantageous matchups. You know, talking for, to some of the teams, talking to some of the coaches, uh, it feels like people are thinking, hey, we can get some big advantages. It will, in fact, be the Ezreal, so disadvantageous matchup there. But with Galio support, clearly you are not drafting for a 2v2. Uh, they want to have Kennen, you know, potentially up against this Jax. I do think uh, Trinity is going to try to go mid. Now, the question becomes, like, are they actually going to just have this weird scenario where everyone's trying to scout out where the lanes are and try to really match lanes? You know, is Caps going to actually be willing to play the Jacks, or will they just bring Broken Blade mid, potentially, to lane against JoJo? Like, how wacky are we going to get? And in the end, Pike will be locked in for G2. I expect a lot of movement on this map early on, as you yeah. say, trying to match the, the, the lane matchups, but also Targamus's Pike is just all over the map in the early game, especially when he gets that umbral glaive. And, and EG are totally down to do these wacky lane swaps. You know, they actually did this in the LCS, um, picking Lucian and actually putting Jojo playing the Lucian top in the GP to try to have these more aggressive counter picks that he is more adept at than Impact. So uh, it is a really interesting one. And we'll have to find out, you know, if they are in fact going to look for that Trinity versus Jax matchup, or just going to be happy playing out the earlier stages here against Kennen. And I feel like when we do have such like wacky drafts, especially on the side of EG, in my mind, where again yeah. getting Trinity back in the mid lane, having the Gallery down in bot. I feel like laning phase could matter quite a bit. Champions and maybe not even the champions specifically, but matchups you're not as comfortable with. And if either side can find a big lead, I feel like it will be very damning going into the mid game, especially G2's comp, which just has so much mobility with that piking nocturne. We'll see which team can get ahead in the early game. A battle for pride, perhaps, for between these two teams. Both of them already qualified for the semifinals. EG, of course, can still claim second place if they win this and then win a tiebreaker versus T1 later. But so far, EG have not beaten G2 in Busan. They are 0 and 5 across five games. G2 are 0 and 5 across their last five games. One of those streaks will be broken. It is the most impactful game of the day, <laughs> even if perhaps the stakes aren't as high as they usually would be. Well, I'd actually argue getting second place is a pretty big deal because RNG looks by, by far the best team. So, you know, yes, it is kind of uh, a long shot, I guess, potentially, you know, you have to beat G2 and you also have to beat T1, so that would be a long road. But if EG were able to get second and dodge RNG, uh, I think that is a big deal because T1 looks so much more beatable. Uh, so this is an important game for them. Yeah, I definitely think, uh, especially for EG, you know, if you got the second place and then maybe had to play T1 in a semifinal, a team that you have already beaten will give you a lot more confidence. 
EG so far, going up towards topside, getting that topside brush, trying to set Impact up for a solid matchup so he can now ward for himself and, you know, beware of Yankos. And Yankos' cheeky gank pats have been talked about quite a few times and what he's able to find early, especially when, like we said, Targamas maybe will be roaming quite heavily to enable him setting up these soul laners. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I don't expect him to do anything on the Nocturne, and also especially because Caps is, is not playing anything with gank assist. You know, generally when he is going for those kind of cheeky ganks, uh, it is playing around the Ari or the LeBlanc yeah. or the Zoe, something that has some sort of a setup here. Uh, if someone is really overpushed, of course, you can always look for the punish, but uh, generally on Nocturne, you want to power to six, you want to be just really efficient on your clears and trying to get that ultimate available here ASAP. Jojo giving Inspired a little bit of a helping hand as that he then dashes That's across cute. the wall. Caps is going top lane into the cannon. Now Ooh. they know right now that yeah. it's cannon top and they know it's Jax in that mid lane. So G2 deciding Gwen into cannon is their matchup. Yeah, yeah, I, I do think it's it's a better matchup. You know, it's it's harder to punish, and, and really it's about you know kind of dodging this matchup for the Jax. Jax is much more comfortable against the Trindamir, uh, and I do think especially in mid lane, it would be very difficult to actually punish this Jax. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna be interested to see you know how comfortable Broken Blade looks playing around mid. You know, something about like ward timings and gank timings. All these things do change a little bit, as we've seen this one before. Danny, uh, when he did play the Ezreal into Targamus' Pike last time around. It was a quick level two, therefore G2, he got first blooded. Of course, this time, EG have the push and are looking to improve on that earlier performance. You can actually see Inspired starting at Razor Beat meant that EG could start in the bottom lane, so they didn't lose the level two, which means they don't fall to that Targamus hook at level two. And Danny now has the dash away, the Justice Punch available as well for Vulcan. They're looking for the damage here. He's going to flash away. He'll used as well by EG. Someone has burnt two on the side of Evil Geniuses, none for G2. Really nice by Targamas as well. Waits for Vulcan, uses the passive, throws out the Winds of War. That's when he looks for the hook, knowing they can come out with the advantageous trade, and they are able to get two summoners from it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is really big. And it just felt like EG not fully respecting that, I think. You know, I think maybe Vulcan thought he was going to be a little bit tankier than he was. He is, of course, playing Aftershock, so he had a really good buffer on his E to actually proc the Aftershock instantly, but realized very quickly, hey, if I actually eat this stun, I'm going to die. So good trade back on a target miss, though. We'll see if EG uh, can continue pushing him back. It's actually really nice from Vulcan. So he gets hooked and then immediately buffers the Justice Punch to knock yep. The Targamus out of the and uh, Ghost Water Drive, the Phantom And, and, and he's yeah. done it both times, right? So it yep. shows knowing the matchup consistently, being able to execute the mechanics of it. And then they can find the the winning trade on, on the exit from Targamus, as we saw from Danny. Very easy, a easily able to land those Qs and those Mystic Shots on the way out. And it feels like, you know, we were hitting on the, the Pike earlier on and the impact that can have, but Vulcan gonna have a lot of roam timers and where he can impact, especially with such high kill threat lanes in a Trindamir and a Cannon. For the moment, we see Camps being forced underneath this tower on the top lane. Yankos oh, has gone a long this. way round here. And as you say, Vulcan has no flash. Justice Punch away. Look for Danny, the Fear Tether coming out. He will jump. The hook only hits onto Vulcan. Good taunt as well. The exhaust now used. EG will be able to retreat once again. Only one summoner burnt by them. Pretty well played, actually, by yep. EG. You know, I was thinking Vulcan was going to be dead. Danny actually kind of blocking for his teammate there. Smart stuff. You know, holds onto the E, doesn't need to use the flash. You know, he can tank those early abilities, buys time there for Vulcan. But of course, G2 are going to have much better reset as a result. They're going to shove this in. Uh, at the very least, it is a cannon wave, so EG won't lose that much. But their early buy, not much to write home about here. You can see it's just the tier for Danny. You always want to try to be able to farm that out a little bit longer. They're kind of hoping for that dream base of tier plus Sheen. Uh, but even a couple long swords does make a big difference here because this is going to kind of put you on the very defensive side of this 2v2. Yeah, I'm very curious to see now with, you know, the resets coming out, Targamas on the map. And we see Impact finding quite a nice lead in the top side. Of course, it's a matchup that wins out early anyway, having the summon area as well. But, you know, maybe Caps in a long lane, a matchup maybe he's not too comfortable with himself. It can be an area where EG can find a lot of impact and that G2 might need to cover a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I do think Caps, you know, obviously he's down on the farm, but um, post six with Ghost, you've also got to be pretty scared, I think, as Kennen with a Nocturne up there. You know, you want to be pushing in this matchup as the Kennen trying to farm plates, trying to harass the Gwen under tower, uh, but that makes you incredibly susceptible uh, to that first Nocturne ultimate. You know, if you get Nocturne ulted at the G2 tower, you're likely going to get ran down. And this is often the ebb and flow we see in the early game, where the junglers are really dictates which lanes can get priority and which lanes push ahead. You see Inspired spend more time on the top side of the map. Impact isn't a winning matchup, but has also had his jungler nearby, means that he can play
play a little bit more aggressively. On the bottom side, Flacket has a lead because Danny and Vulcan have been harassed and harangued by Yankos and by Targamus. So this balance is why the gold is still even, even though we see these CS discrepancies in different lanes. Yeah, and you know, it, it, we can still see G2 continue to index on that bottom side. Really great ward line down in River so far. EG can have no vision, no information of what's going on. It really feels like Impact Inspired is going to have to just pivot and keep playing up towards Impact. And G2 just going to get, you know, a Drake because of all the setup they've been able to get so far. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're winning the 2v2 very heavily, uh, so you can just kind of trade cross map. They're pinging on towards the tower, and it's an early level 6 here for Impact, so Caps kind of has to leave. Uh, he will have to back this up. We'll get stunned with the Spectral more. He's going to be forced away, but inspired no Heartbreaker, even with Jojo Pyun coming up, just trying to force Caps away from the tower. Exactly. It's about the denial here, because there's no TP on Caps. Impact saved his TP already ahead, so now down 20 CS. You have to base. You're going to lose two plates, two waves, and the, the wave is going to be pushing away from you. Um, so Caps in a bit of a rough spot here, to be honest, as Jojo going to go for this all-in. Ghost on Dying Mage. Look for the trade. Notice there's no Counter-Strike. Broken Blade does have the Flash to get away. We'll use it across the wall, and that's the issue with using your Counter-Strike early. Exactly. Exactly, and that was really well played there by Jojo. When you Great try to discipline. go for that trade aggressively with the Counter-Strike, Trinibir has the opportunity to look for the... Oh, oh fancy I feet. love watching Galios do that. It's like, oh, I'm coming back towards Electric you. No, slide. I'm not. <laughs> just moonwalks his way out of that. That was nice, but yeah, just, just well played there. Getting the flash out. Yes, you trade your Ghost, uh, but now Broken Blade quite susceptible. Uh, for these next couple minutes here, no ult, no flash, caps being put pretty far down. You know, 23 CS with the wave pushing away from you, not the position you want to be in. And caps really has been the focal point of, of much of the success for G2, you know, not just here, but over the years. Uh, especially here, though, I think he's been the one guy that I feel like even when things were going bad for G2, it felt like Caps kind of was that spark plug. He was the, the hope in a lot of these matchups. You think back to the RNG game against Shaohu, uh, where it was really kind of more of a way diff than a mid diff, where Caps was, was winning out in that 1v1. Um, so to have Caps down here early, uh, they're not going to be too happy about that. And I can see Yanko's trying to get up there and, and remedy that. It is also why it's a little surprising they've moved Caps out of the mid lane. Mid, yeah. mid and jungle have so much control over such a large portion of the map that to move Caps to the top lane, yes, you are getting a better matchup for Broken Blade, and it makes sense why they've done it. You just take away that catalyst that you were talking about. Yeah, and I feel like another important point on that is not just, you know, mid lane, but then how you communicate and interact with the other teammates, right? Because supports impacting mid is another way you can unlock your mid laner. It's like, okay, Broken Blade now having to be the one to work with Targamas just changes the dynamic completely. And I, I think it does show a lot of trust in Broken Blade though, yep. right? Because you're kind of saying, hey, I'm taking the worst lane for me. You know, I'm going to play top lane so you can dodge this matchup. Now it puts the pressure on Broken Blade to really make good on that, to be able to carry. You know, EG, I don't think they're going to commit to this because Danny's still bot, but it could be a 4v4. Oh, no, coming out Broken there with a great taunt, the slicing Maelstrom onto the back line as well. Yankel's already down. Ritteld was secured. Resets coming out is inspired, looks for the chase. Heartbreaker forward, Caps and Targmas flashing away. They will escape underneath their tower. Caps has popped that ghost. Broken Blade there with a leap as well. Spectral Moor still hits, inspired, looking for the damage. Blade of the Moon King into the reset. Shoujo Pyun has the undying rage. The chase continues for EG. Slicing and dicing through them, but Jojo Pyun a little bit too deep, perhaps. Caps able to escape, Targmas able to get the kill. Inspired, underneath the tower, looks for the reset. You still tank the tower while you do that. And Inspired will be met by Yankos in the end. Very aggressive stuff there from EG. But the new Kaisa was also on a reset, so they're down to take the 4v4. All things said here, it is the Herald going the way of G2. One extra kill for EG, though. Uh, could have could have been a little bit better for them. I don't think Jojo was able to actually get his Q off as that ult expired. It was really well timed, you know, from the G2 members being able to immediately kill him off before he actually popped that heal. Uh, but not too bad. Pretty yep. even overall. Overall, I really like that EG actually opted to take this fight, right? Because I feel like G2's comp index is way more to pick and finding numbers advantage. EG having these big abilities to lock people down. Huge taunt coming out from Vulcan. And then impact with a beautiful slicing Maelstrom. And even as Broken Blade tries to get away, taking some of that damage as well. And EG realizing they have the ability to follow up. Jojo Pyun still having his ultimate, I think, gives Evil Geniuses the confidence to be able to look for this dive. Sadly, though, they are going to get a bit of kills, but are going to overaggress a little bit for it. And Inspired going to end up in a bit of an awkward position, even though he does, you know, find one more in the end. Yep, Inspired gets the kill. Uh, I, it's it's kind of debatable. Is it worth it? You know, you're getting the kill. You're giving one over there to Yankos. Uh, overall, I do think it's a pretty even trade. You know, EG continuing to play with confidence, though, and that's something yep. that I do like to see from them. 
You know, in the earlier game today, the Samira, uh, I think, was a pretty good example. You know, not a pick I love, but they played it with confidence. We can see Yankos here waiting for the counter gank. EG know that Yankos is here, though. They spotted him on the ward, and the Slicing Mouse comes out immediately. Caps is down. Reset for Inspired, his third kill of the game. And Yankos, you were on vision the entire time, and EG get a double once again for Inspired. That is massive, because they're trying to get Caps back into the game. They're hoping to get a kill. Drop Herald, take that tower. Look at the top diff here between Impact and Caps. Nearly 1,500 gold in the favor of impact now caps getting sent back to mid lane so far but we'll see if, if broken blade you know can can kind of be that strong member can get up there towards that top lane and be that split pusher for them because caps is just having a rough one but that's one of the reasons i love the aggressive play from inspired early on getting that kill on caps it, it shuts down caps sets him behind kills on viego as well are just so strong if you can get towards your sundra inspired now is at four kills he is reading yankos like a book in a lot of these plays and eg can use his power to really pop off for the rest of the game yeah, and even just setting Yankos uh, down on the opposite side, right? Playing a champion like Nocturne, a champion that really is no way out. You only go in is quite rough, but you guys already hit on it, knowing that Yankos was here. Again, just having some more of these tools to be able to take the fight. Huge slicing Maelstrom coming out from Impact, leaving Yankos in the 1v2. Very easy kill followed up for Inspired. And now it's just that tough question, right? Like, do you continue to actually play towards the losing lane, or do you say, all right, good luck? Uh, because on the other side, Vulcan has been moving. You know, G2 is winning that 2v2. They did pick Ezreal into the losing matchup, you know, very largely, I think, because they're saying, all right, Danny, it's not going to be about you. We're going to play about the other lanes. You can fall down. Uh, but this does mean Flacket is very strong. And they're going to drop Herald now, bot here. They're going to look to push this in. Viego is moving, so I don't expect them to actually get the full tower, but they will get gold here onto Flacket. He's got to be a bit careful, though. Danny putting a lot of damage down as well. Jojo Pyun coming up from the top side, but here comes the paranoia as they look for the chase. Broken Blade has the flash, will jump back with a leap strike to fear as well. We'll keep Jojo Pyun in spot for the moment. Gets to the blast cone, but there's nowhere for him really to go. You can see Flacket coming up from the side as well. Targum is going forward, Jojo. Well, that's oh. some very fancy feet. He will still die. Gold not gifted over the Ignite <laughs> from Targumus, just love, to make sure he goes down. He just accepts in the end, like, I can't do it. Jojo Pyun dancing, skirting around the fight so well. Blows the summoner. Nice bit of nice pick there though from G2, getting the kill onto Jojo Pion, but honestly, well played to actually force out the yep. the summoner to be used there and sidestep the gold. So no bonus gold going across, not the extra bit from your cut. Again, Caps getting pushed out of lane here once more, though more plates going to go the way of impact. And we can see, you know. Jojo still pretty strong in this 1v1. He would have had that kill on Broken Blade, even with Nocturne there, if it weren't for the fear. Yeah, and I, I kind of want to see now EG take advantage as Vulcan. Not going to be able to find anything. Because now you've blown your paranoia on Yankos, right? Have a bit of a window where if EG look for another play towards the top side, both Impact and Inspired have everything. Divine Sunder already built on Inspired as yep. well. I feel like it would be quite an advantageous 2v2. Looks like Inspired is going to focus on, you know, going back to his camps instead. You can actually see now G2 have swapped their lanes back. Caps going towards mid lane. Broken Blade is now answering up towards that top side. Yeah. Caps 40 CS down in the top lane matchup. Yeah, it's a bit of a rough one for sure. Uh, but now that Jax actually has some levels and has some CDR, you can kind of start to threaten uh, playing that matchup pretty aggressively into the cannon. You really can start to look to win that. Uh, obviously, he has the CDR boots, has the early Kindle gem here. If Inspired is on that side of the map, you've got to play with respect. Um, but you do have the ability to win out in that 1v1. And mid lane is just a safer lane. If you're losing, it's a shorter lane. It's yeah. harder to actually get punished. So Caps should be able to get more consistent farm. And I think this is a smart move here from G2. Plus, with all the gold in the pockets of Flackhead, if he can really kind of call back to some of those earlier performances in the event uh, where he was playing fearless, he was taking over team fights. he has a huge CS advantage. He's being donated all the plates, all the gold from his team. And I'm really curious to see what Flackhead can do with that because when you look at the, the you know, champions that EG has, really only Danny is someone that Flackhead has the ability to dive on. <laughs> you dive onto Jojo Pioneer Impact, feels like the Kai'Sa will just get one shot. So it feels like 4G2's engage is gonna have to be quite I almost thought my mind there for a second. They walked past that bush like six times. Broken Blade walked into it, almost walked back out of it. It's like, oh wait, <laughs> there's a control ward here. I've been walking across it the entire time. They do clear it out in the end. But yes, as you say, how can Flacket impact the map? And how can EG play around the fact that Inspired and Impact are so big right now? Because they are very powerful. Next Dragon, third of the game for G2 if they get it in two minutes time. That's where I expect the real crux of this conflict to start. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do think it becomes very difficult to actually play. You know, when you're playing Ezreal into Ocean Soul, your, your poke starts to really uh, become very easy to shrug off. EG trying to make a play towards this second Herald up on top side. 
Uh, should be able to secure it. Doesn't look like GG, or G2 is going to move towards uh, Contest. It has been GG for their opponents <laughs> a lot of the time recently. It's <laughs> I love, I love that you can laugh at the struggle. That's yeah, how you we, get through we, we the pain. We just name EG to EZ, and it's EG to <laughs> EZ versus GG, yes. But yeah. clear divide so far in terms of where the teams have been playing, right? G2, uh, since EG had just gotten the Rift Tail, going to have full control over this bottom side. And that this is what their game plan is going to be from now on, right? Enabling Broken Blade in that side lane, playing around him with Yankos mm -hmm. and even Targamas to try and have him start winning out in that 1v1. Still doesn't have the Mythic quite yet. I would assume he's probably sitting on the backboard, maybe even already? Yeah, yeah, I, I would think he, he pretty much has it. Or he's got to be very close at, at least. Uh, probably has it on this base. Uh, but it's been a pretty slow game over the last couple minutes, which I do think favors G2 in this situation. You know, buying more time for the Jax, buying more time uh, for Gwen to kind of get back into it here. But EG pushing mid with Herald, wanting to knock this down, setting up for the Dragon. Uh, they will have mid lane push and should be able to get this tower. We'll see if the G2 wants a contest, but I don't think so with Targumus coming out of base. Looks like G2 will just wait to catch the Rift Herd as it charges forward. Vision control though now for EG in the river. You can see where Impact is lying in wait. A single slicing Maelstrom could turn this game very much in EG's favor. And already that 1,500 gold ahead as we enter the mid portion of the match. And G2 are just going to give up the Dragon, I, I think. I mean, Broken Blade's going towards top. He hasn't actually reset to spend his gold. So uh, to me, this says they're not going to contest it. They're just going to give up Dragon number three, You know, buy more time for Jax, try to trade uh, for either the full tower top or at the very least some damage. Uh, they could, of course, TP him in, but it just wouldn't make sense to TP a no mana Jackson who hasn't bought. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, all, I'm a little surprised, though, the fact that G2 aren't pivoting more up towards top side. They are finally doing it now, but it felt like if, if you knew you were going to give up the Drake anyway, start getting into the enemy jungle, get some vision down, see if any camps are up that you can take away from Inspired and really enable Broken Blade. Not able to do it. An impact will use the TP to make sure that Broken Blade isn't able to get any damage down on the tower, but mostly EG just get that dragon for free. Yep, not too bad for them whatsoever. So, you know, buying themselves a little bit more time. Danny, of course, you know, trying to scale up. Um, and to me, I, I, this feels like one of those games where a play is going to happen on side, one team is going to come out ahead, and things are going to start snowballing, yep. right? You know, if you're able to get a kill in side lane with the Nocturne plus one of your split pushers, or on the other side, you know, with Galio potentially plus uh, Jojo Pion, then you start having to have the map pulled apart, right? Extra people have to come and answer. That opens up the later game objectives, things like the Baron. And this is really kind of feeling that, that type of game because I don't think either team is, is really super confident about full, full all-inning a 5v5 uh, because it can be very, very dicey with these compositions. Their, their fights are so swing. Like, yeah. depends, does a Pike ultimate land, in which case G2 probably win the fight. Does Jojo Pure manage to get onto the back line and get a couple of crits? Then mm -hmm. EG probably win the fight, right? A good slice of mouse and mouse and just turns it on its head, right? And G2, over the last couple of days, have fallen victim to those swingy fights a lot of times in the mid game. So I'm not surprised they want to play a little bit more cautiously in this one. But you know what I am? I'm surprised. <laughs> Comes out of nowhere, boo. Did I shock you guys? You know, I, I just love that it feels like we always get these. We, when we do we... have to say the, the thing. Oh, do we? Yeah, so I, was, I wanted you to <laughs> you finish and then he I'll say the thing. He actually was surprised. He's yeah, like, so you were shocked. Look, I, he just thought you really loved the emote. Well, no, I, love I, it, I knew the emote He's was like, wow, coming he up. He is but... passionate about this emote. <laughs> Don't forget to grab your exclusive scare prize. Get Prime Gaming emote so you can strut when you flash and turn a fight. Boo. I got to say, yesterday, you actually did sound pretty passionate about the emote. Uh, I'm very passionate about emote. It's a great emote. I think it's really cool. It's hard to be the thumbs up. It kind of just yeah. You know, you know, you don't have to flash and turn and fight for the thumbs up. You could be inting it. You could be slamming. You know, you could just miss a cannon. I have mine uh, bound to my mouse buttons, so every time I do anything in lane, it's a different emote. Uh -huh. Sad crying dog, happy face. I would mute well, you. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and I hope my opponents do. Yeah, I'm in their mind. I'm in their, <laughs> I'm in their brain palace. As we look for a play down oh, towards TV. the bottom side, you said perhaps these sideline plays could be enough. Ultimate comes out from the Nocturne, Paranoia, perhaps a scare price here for Jojo Pyun, but he still has the Undying Raid, the Fear into the ult, will get him out, Hero's Entrance coming back as Caps tries to dodge away, G2 reacting, Targamus keeping Danny busy off towards the side, Inspired goes underneath the tower, Flacket dies forward with Targamus, and that's one kill as Danny will fall, Impact did not have TP to answer this play. Yeah, I'm really shocked that, that EG even tried to contest this, because as you say, no teleport on Impact, Jojo got out for free. That should have been the end of it. EG don't need to actually scrap there, but they decide to go back in. That kill was never going to happen from G2. Danny, 
uh, was was caught in rotation trying to come back in and assist this. Vulcan is using the ultimate to try to come in and assist this. I think at the worst, you would have just given up your bot tier two. Uh, Jojo Pion backs out. EG pushes mid. Impact is pushing top, and the play is watched. It's tier two for tier two. In the yeah. End. And I was going to say, overall, it should be a win for the side of EG, right? You're getting more waves in. You're denying more CS on the opposite side. G2 committed five members down to the bot side to make that play. So overall, and yeah, yeah teleport. a bit of a misstep going going over uh, from EG to, to give a bit more over. And that is where some of those aggressive tendencies, I think, can bite you a little bit. You know, where EG has been pretty down to scrap, I think it has been serving them well, and I would rather they be, you know, a little bit too confident to fight uh, than not enough, to be honest. Um, but it can definitely hurt you, and, and Danny, you know, falling further behind, Flacket does get another kill there. At the very least, Flacket did have to spend his flash and his ulti. So he will be much more vulnerable potentially here at this next fight because Flash is available on JoJo, on Vulcan, on Impact. Uh, and if Flacket is caught, uh, that is going to be dangerous. Just look at how quickly these ultimates are coming back off Kudo. Though. Yankos is already back. 50 ability haste. The on that not done. Yep. The Lucidity Boots, the Kindle Jam, and the Stride Breaker giving you 50 ability haste. And then obviously runes and masteries can give you even more. G2 have that option to keep looking for that play. See Targumus with the Unbook Lave trying to clear out as much vision as possible. That ward in the middle of mid lane is one we often see and, uh, being used well by EG just to track some of the movements from G2. Well, you can see EG getting a little bit nervous. Impact is G2 actually starting up any potential play here? And Impact Ooh. on the flank here, waiting in the brush. Inspired moving up, and Caps caught on the wrong side of the map, potentially. Yeah, there's nowhere for Caps to go here. Danny can just jump across the wall, doesn't want to until Impact at least has some damage down. Caps could dash into Danny, looking for the 1v1, but Danny waiting and ready to go. That was so smart from Danny. If you E over the wall, he can go back yep. the other way. So Danny just playing it out smart, not over committing there, gets the kill, and now EG will get a dragon off the back of this. So back-to-back -back dragons here from EG. Caps getting punished in the side lane. I also just love the fact that Impact knew he didn't have to use his ultimate, right? Because yeah. it felt like a waste of that ultimate could have been huge when right now, having the Shadow Flame now, he's going to do so oh, much to strong. the members of G2 who really have no magic resist built yet. And I, I actually love this build. You know, when, when you're solo AP, stack the spell pen. Don't go Zonias. Don't go Banshees. Don't give me these Merc Trail Don't kills. Go Rift Maker, <laughs> Rift <into>. Maker, Conqueror. <laughs> you know, I, I think that it's it's the way to play it. You know, he's going Rocket Belt. He's uh, has a lot of early spell pen here with the Tier Two boots plus the Shadow Flame. So if he can find that fight, uh, it is going to be incredibly impactful. And of course, you know, coming up on this next dragon where there is very likely to be a contest, he should have stopwatch gold pretty easily. So yes, he won't have the Zonias, but. Uh, is going to be in a good position to scrap. And I got to say, right, it's true with them stacking up oceans and then if they can make their way to the soul. Like, sure, G2's comp is very all in and wants, like, a very short, bursty fight. So they really shouldn't be looking to take too much poke. At least the contests over mid wave are really going to hurt for the side of G2 with Danny dishing out all that damage. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, if, if either team gets the soul, it's very hard to win a 1v1 in the side lane yeah. against an ocean soul team. You have to really start to index um, towards that heal cut. Your itemization gets worse for the 1v1 as a result, and they're still going to be having uh, quite a bit of sustain in there. Uh, EG trying to get these important item completions. Of course, you called out the Shadow Flame. Death Dance is through. Danny now finally has his Muramana there. Uh, so the big completions are coming in. But on the other side, Flackhead, you know, he, I feel like, is the big hope. 270 CS at 24 minutes in the game. He is yeah, being he is funneled so here. Alongside Broken Blade, he's got 210. EG start up the ban, as you say. Oh. Targumus and Yankos could look for the steal here. Control Ward into the pit means that the Paranoia can go in. They're trying to force a fight around Impact. They're saying Impact is Omega strong right now. You better TP Broken Blade or we're going to take it. But G2 calling their bluff, and rightfully so. Yeah, you know. Targumus. I'm surprised if EG were going to commit, they wouldn't want to commit a little bit more. Inspired was taking quite a bit of damage and getting low, but yeah. I still feel like they, they probably had the tools to be able to stay, have enough threat to force a TP coming out from Broken Blade. But hey, in a game like this, when you're fighting for a second, when you're fighting for a chance to not face RNG, I guess you don't even want to risk it. Well, if you have a different marksman, I think they could commit more to it. But like Ezreal is just not the champion that really burns it down. Um, Jojo's still just on the one item, so they are a little bit low on the DPS. Kind of, of course, big team fight threat, but again, they just don't have a great Baron take, so I think it would have taken them a while. I do think it's correct to pull off. If you get low, any sort of damage is going to set up for Targamus's alts, and that can be a game losing True. play very easily. It's like, you might get Broken Blade's TP, but they might get an ace and a Baron, so. Ooh. And EG have aced enough people at Baron to know the ah, opposite side of it. Experience. Yeah. Anathema's Chains coming out for Yanko, second item. Really curious to see who he uses that one on. I, I would assume Impact, but with the amount of damage he'll be dealing out in these fights, 
Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have to find out exactly what it is. I mean, I think Danny also makes a lot of sense, just having the, you know, the additional CC onto him. Uh, the reduction in tenacity is something that I always Huge. really value very highly. Uh, with Nocturne, you get that longer fear duration. Danny is not playing cleanse. He does not have QSS. There's no Mikhails. If you land a fear on him, he's probably just dead. For another reason, you could do Jojo Pium for, for the yeah. same reason, because if he's feared Absolutely. when he's in the Undying Rage and he's just running away from you, it's like, cool, you're not hitting me with There's that axe. There's too I'm many options, happy. boys. Too many. Does make him a little bit tankier as well, but we'll see. I recommend Galio. <laughs> I don't. As the uh, unbiased broadcaster in this situation, you know. EG just appeared to done a Zayo check <laughs> PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to them, G2. You can still come out of today with your heads at least a little bit higher than they were at the start. Well, and let, let's be honest, you know, there's there's a lot of time for things to change for G2 between now and the knockout stage, yeah. right? They have some time. We know that they can play at an incredibly high level. We have seen that demonstrated here. And yes, we know that they can have some really rough games. They're on a, a pretty uh, big downturn, but they can try to turn things around. Uh, and thankfully, PSG lost for them, so they are already through, and they really can focus win or lose on that knockout stage. I also think the fact that they're one of the teams willing to be very creative in draft will obviously help them out so much in a best of five. It would That'll help them more if they started winning when they were creative <laughs> in the draft. Uh, you could pick Bard Jungle for you want if it keeps yeah, losing. The, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, though. the Riven, uh, yeah, not, <laughs> but it's not so exactly. cool. No, that's true. He was named after the champion. Like, stop good, being right? creative. Pick Orn. Yeah. Vulcan, though, perhaps a little caught out, has to burn the flash as the Bone Skewer was going to connect. I've seen Vulcan in that position a few times. The Paranoia comes in, there's Ooh. no way out. Death from below marks the spot as G2 now looks for the chase. Broken Blade TPing in. Caps coming in from the top side as well. Flanker with a good flank position. Heartbreaker Impact's out by Inspired. Impact coming in. Will G2 back away? Jojo can look for a bit of damage himself. Impact does have the flash, has that Hextech rocket belt as well, but he will be diving into the go G2. Void Seeker not quite going to connect. Good true shot for us. We'll chip away Solid at G2. Damage. This is a little bit scary because Kennen still has Flash and ulti, but I mean, no ult on Jojo Pia, no ult on Inspired, no Flash on him. Vulcan's dead. This is a really hard contest. We'll see, though. Can Impact get into the pit here? It's on target. They he should give it. They a really just give it. good job of stopping Zayas's Kennen getting into a fight. And yeah. as you say, they should give it. And they do G2 get the Baron off a single pick. That is massive. And Vulcan has had a habit this this tournament of getting caught out, you know, looking for vision, didn't have inspired with him. You know, it's okay. You have to do uh, some warding, of course. You can't always be playing defensive, can't always be playing with perfect information. Uh, but in this case, get punished very hard. They get the kill. They force out these key cooldowns. And now G2 with the run of the map up 3,000 gold. EG will move to soul point. Uh, but G2 could potentially extend this lead a Another lot one. here. Again, it just keeps coming off cooldown. He's looking for the chase Got here. No Danny there as well. No ult for Inspired. As you say, Heartbreaker still on cooldown itself. Stopwatch. Jojo Prim looking for a flank. Vulcan going in as well. Exhaust onto Broken Blade. G2, though, continue to advance. Vulcan now not in the best of situations. No flash for him. No way out. You feel the lock. And impact comes in. Only slicing out onto Yankos. Who pops a stopwatch Inspired. Now pull back. Yankos flashes away. EG looking to try and turn this fight around. As Caps still pushing in the top lane. It's a 4v5. It's Broken Blade falls. EG. Continue to advance his fire with the counter strike, gets onto Targamus, he flashes away, heartbreaker for the follow, caps on the inhibitor. It's still good for G2. It's honestly still good for G2 because they're able to uh, get that top lane tower and the inhibitor here. Really well played in the 4v5, keeping EG interested. Yes, they do lose one member, but they even get a second tower off the back of it. I feel like G2 are just playing so well around this window where they see impact on the side lane, and they're so decisive pulling the trigger. And they know that's when they win, right? That they spot one member, oh, even only slightly disconnected from the rest of the squad. Kams is stunned here. Targamus is on the way here as entrance as well. Kams is gonna locked up. Good, hallowed miss. He manages to get one. Vulcan, though, going in with the top flank is gonna cleanse away the paranoia coming in as G2. Look for the turnaround. Can have been sick by Flacken, flash across the wall. The kill onto Impact may have turned it in G2's favors, but Danny finds a shutdown, and now it's Danny versus the world, and the world comes down like a ton of bricks. Yeah, no way for him to win that one. Flacken is so far ahead, closing in on a flame horizon here. Jojo out to the other side of the map, and G2 is just using their global so well. EG is playing single teleport, so they're pulling Impact out to the side. They tax his teleport, and then they're using the Nocturne ultimate and double TP to create big advantages here. 1v1, both level Jojo. 15. Jojo Pion against Broken Blade. Jojo Pion does still have the Undying Rage. Broken Blade's Broken Blade wins. Oh, he's he's yeah, he is yeah. winning it right now. A couple of crits could change it, but the Counter Strike late enough. Undying Rage will time out. And Broken Blade can just dash onto the Trindamir's face. Yeah, once Jax has armor, it becomes really hard to actually win out with the Frozen Heart. Frozen, frozen Heart exactly. too much. You just, you just live out. You can see that he was delaying the Counter Strike a really long time, knowing exactly how to play it out. And again, 
as soon as you see Trindamir bot lane, that is the key thing. There's no TP on Trindamir, so they're just gonna go for the play. Yeah, they're continuously just pulling the trigger at, at such good timings. They all in instantly, trying to find a way back with uh, with Danny not really touching the fight, but still G2 find their way on key members like Impact. Yeah, I mean, that kill as well, actually getting that kill onto the Viego that early was critical. Yeah. You know, if he gets the reset there onto Caps, the fight can look very, very different. So Caps, big play from him, able to finish off that kill. Lane was really rough for him, um, but G2 has done a good job actually keeping him relevant, buying him time in the side lane to farm it up. Uh, well, Impact has just been kind of forced to group as, as the key member for EG. And you look, Caps almost has a death cap. And I feel like even just looking at other items, right? We have a Guardian Angel on, on Yankos already. We have a stopwatch still in Plackett's inventory. They can play on a knife edge. They can play aggressive, and they still should be able to come out on top. It's the ability of G2 just to dive in on a single target. So often EG are using a lot of cooldowns to disengage the fight, and G2 are just advancing and advancing and advancing. Yeah. And if EG ever managed to find a fight where they can be the ones making the proactive play, they're really strong. Like, Danny is three items on this Ezreal. If he can poke, he is in a great position. Inspired is now three items on this Viego, and we talked Impact's praises throughout the entire game. If he gets a good ult, things can still shift. Yeah, and I feel like that's the huge thing, right? Is G2 continuously keeping Impact on side? So we haven't seen him able to find a huge slicing Maelstrom since the first Rift Herald fight, which was yeah. even before he was th this big monster that he is right now. Well, that's the thing is that there's a, there's a lot of, you know, if there are situations in which EG, I think, can win a fight for sure, a lot of them around how Impact can play. Uh, but G2 just don't have to take the fights, right? Yep. They spread the map. We'll see, though, if EG can get anything done here at this next Dragon. That is the big question, because that is playing for Soul. EG, of course, on Soul Point. But if you send too many people over there, Double TV is bailed for G2. And two inhibitors are down. They could potentially just end the game. So uh, EG have got to make sure they don't overcommit. Yeah, I don't I don't even know how, how EG get the map in a state so where hard. they can safely just you know, ignore waves, walk straight to the Dragon Pit, get vision set up. It feels like G2 will just be solidly favored. EG, you might even just have to, to give the next one up, keep trying to get more items, but it doesn't get any better with Jax just getting further and further ahead. I mean, Flackid's almost full build as it is. 30 minutes in, 370 CS going along. I like the clappers there, and G2 continue just to control vision in the EG jungle. Don't really give them a moment to breathe as the waves continue to push in. 10 seconds on the Drake. Expectations are that Yankos will just go around, take that by himself, while the rest of G2 continue this unrelenting pressure on the EG face. Yep, going to be able to grab that up, no problem. And here's the good thing, Zale. I'm a little happier because G2 are winning a game. Yeah. You can still be happy because EG are in the semifinals. Yeah. There's not this, like, NA greater than EU, EU greater than NA, although I will say, EU have won six of the six games they played against each other, okay. so okay. as much I as things change, coming. things say the same, it seems. Well, you know, the real thing is, though, NA record, that's kind of less important. <laughs> What was the record against PSG? That's really, <laughs> that's really how you that's determine. The that's diff, the last okay? you, know? you can't beat Messi. It's just Guys, impossible. That was an interview from Faker. He, he was talking about that's the bar, you know, something, something bay. Don't worry, you guys can be Jojo fist bumping take him down. as T1 and RNG are taking you both down in the semis, you know? Or... I mean, it's the 2019 storyline oh, all exactly. over again. <laughs> TL went four and six in that group and then clapped the LPL. Yeah. G2 went five and five and then won the whole thing. There so. you go. Um, EG, though, trying to do something on the map here as they start up this Baron down yeah, to 7,000. Broken Blade can TP in. Paranoia going in as they look to like isolate Impact off towards the tide. Caps forced off towards the top side. Broken Blade TP'd in the middle of the fight. Blackhead and Yankos are looking for Impact. They should be able to take him down through this stopwatch. Impact tries to get away. The Fear Tether doesn't quite hit. Hero's entrance coming in as EG. Danny now four slow. Caps low as well. Blackhead goes on the killing spree. He kills off Jojo. Caps chases down Danny. And EG, you said they tried to flip it. Well, the flip. Sadly, came up tails. The impact ultimate at the end has a little of it. Inspired will fall in the end. You can steal away caps, but it's the closest you'll get to winning this game. Yeah, huge coming out from G2. EG not able to connect the big Wombo, the CC coming out from the Galio. Impact with a huge cannon ult, and G2 will just be able to push through the base, making it that 6-0 scoreline against EG. Well, someone has to continue the 0-6 legacy today. It is EG's opportunity to do so. As much as things are the inhibitor respawns, and a great line coming up with the inhibitor respawns to stop it. EG, though, perhaps with this inhibitor respawn have time. Eight seconds on JoJo. Maybe I was a little bit too happy for them.
As much as things have changed, they still stay the same. EU greater than NA. <laughs> well, I gotta give it to them. They had our number in this yeah. event, for sure. <laughs> Not much I can say about that. G2 ending on a high note here for the Rumble stage. Congratulations to them. Of course, both teams making it yep. through to the knockout stage. Uh, EG going to be happy about that, but definitely a disappointing performance against G2. Uh, but it's nice to see G2 able to bounce back. And I think playing the map really intelligently, you know, the early laning phase, absolutely a struggle for Caps. But G2 just played the map very, very intelligently. They didn't kind of crumble under the pressure. They utilized double TP plus the knockout.